why did you wait so long to decide to run? Well, we just took a look at it. We wanted to calm down. Uh, the whole experience was pretty um, exciting. And uh, so Mary and I decided we would relax, get away, con con you know, con bring ourselves together and, and uh, decide what we would do. And I started having people call on me lately and good friends, people I respected, and they urged me to consider it. So we did a real serious consideration here uh, in the last few weeks, and that's how we reached the decision. A lot of prayer and worry. How, do you think you could work with President Trump after all the things he said about you, <laughs> the Attorney General and beyond? Look, it's no secret um, there was ups and downs in our, our relationship. Uh, and um, the president was just very, you know, he's very v strong in his beliefs, and, and I understood it. It was a very difficult time for him. But um, uh, I think that from what he said just today and yesterday indicates that uh, he's um, uh, certainly neutral on this race. He's not going to take a, a sides in it. His son, Don Jr., who's a friend, uh, said the same in Birmingham last night. Uh, and I think Vice President P Pence did. So I feel good about that. And they're going to see that I have not changed. I mean, this is the deal. I didn't support Donald Trump because I knew him. He was a friend. He was going to do something for me. I thought he was advancing the very agenda that the American people wanted. That's what he was doing. And he still is. And he's had problems. Sometimes he's made some mistakes. But I would say that uh, he has honored the promises he's made to the American people. He stayed uh, firm on those. And if he is reelected and we push in the Congress, which has been dragging their feet, if we push that Congress, and uh, we can make a difference. And I just got to say, walking in there day one, who does not and live with these issues like I have, haven't been there, doesn't know how the Senate can just move things around and you turn around and nothing has been done. I'm telling you, they have to be pushed. And you have to have senators who will stand up in the conference to the Republicans and stand up to the Democrats on the floor. Have you had any discussions with Senator McConnell about seniority or how he feels about your running? Senator McConnell uh, and I have not talked in recent weeks. Um, but we've talked a number of times in recent years. I've never criticized him um, publicly, um, but uh, it's, I will be a pusher. He knows that. He knows me. He knows what I believe. I've talked to him as attorney general and as a senator. And uh, so I'm one senator. I have the same vote he does, the same vote as anybody in the leadership. And we need, to, we need to encourage our members to think that way. They don't work for somebody. They work for their constituents. That's what I think. And so I, I'm confident we'll have a good professional relationship, but I have some views about the issues uh, that I intend to advocate. What about the recusal that started everything? Looking back at it now, would you have recused yourself I was required to recuse myself, in my opinion. That's what the expert legal uh, people in the Department of Justice said. I think I did my duty. Uh, everybody knows about it. There's no need to argue about it anymore. It's in the past. What we're talking about, Bob, is what happens day one when the new senator hits uh, Washington, D.C. Will they be affected in advancing the agenda that the American pe people, and particularly Alabamians, want. I mean, President Trump is very popular in Alabama. They want his agenda. They want to stand up to China and protect us from un unfair trade practices that are closing factories and eliminating jobs. They want us to have a lawful system of immigration. They're sick and tired of a border that's just a porous sieve, and Congress dawdles and blocks the president day after day, month after month, from achieving those goals. I was there as attorney general and working with the Department of Homeland Security. And we worked our hearts out to get things done, and we couldn't get the help we needed from Congress. And finally, uh, I think the president is right that we've got to reevaluate our involvement around the world in so many military adventures uh, that are draining our wealth, costing us blood, and really 
most importantly, not helping the countries we've tried to help. So I think those are issues that uh, Democrats have been not good on, they haven't been pushing for, and a lot of Republicans are on the sidelines and hadn't been engaged, and they need to be engaged. Of course, you, you're not running as, as senator at large, you're running for senator in Alabama. What do you have to offer to the folks in Alabama? You mentioned starting hitting the ground running. This is so important. A senator is a tremendously important office for Alabama. And you have to know this state. You have to know the issues that are relevant to this state, whether it goes to taxes, whether it goes to uh, 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 environmental rules, or our defense industry. I was real pleased that Senator Jim Inhofe, uh, chairman of the Armed Services Committee, on which I served with him for 20 years, now our chairman, uh, has been so supportive of me. He called me, he signed a letter just yesterday along with a group of other senators. Um, being able to work with him is important because, um, because we've got so many military bases and such a presence here. Austell and the LCS ships, that is so important. And a lot of decisions are gonna be made. And you know we work really hard for Airbus um, and we didn't win, we won it the first time when President Bush was in, and then we lost it, but uh, we're so proud of Airbus. And, but the whole defense industry is uh, big, big for, for Alabama. Now, getting back to the immigration in a second, the policy of separating parents from their children, is it legal or is it moral to do that? Well, look, the people, we had like 13,000 family unit members crossing the border five years ago. Uh, in about two years, it went to 87,000. Now I think it's about 200,000. What was happening, Bob? The families were coming across. You didn't prosecute children, but the adults committed an offense, a criminal offense, when they came across the border illegally. So all I said was that uh, we would prosecute the cases that were brought to us. And if you go, the, most of these cases end in a, a few days. They go in and plead guilty. They're caught flat-footed in the country illegally, and they plead guilty and are deported. Uh, and they were just not doing it for anybody that brought family. And the word got out, if you brought family, you wouldn't be prosecuted. We have to, we can't give immunity to people who put their children at risk or somebody else's children at risk uh, to cross our border. There was not enough housing uh, really to, to keep the family together. I, I, uh, that was, was the Department of Health and Human Services. The children were held by the Department of Health and Human Services in non-custodial care. They got education uh, and often they were just turned over to somebody, some adult family member. So I, uh, you, you can't have that major loophole. We've got to figure out how to handle it. It may take some time to get the proper housing, but we can get it done. I remember Ronald Reagan having his 11th commandment about not speaking ill of another Republican. Well, some of your opponents have already started sniping at you. Do you intend to snipe back? We're going to talk about the future. This is about the future. Uh, who can hit the Senate running? Who can protect Alabama's interest? from the Washington budget. That's not unimportant, it's very important, number one. Number two, uh, can you help advance the ideas that Alabama believes in? I think they want a fighter up there. They don't want a potted plant, somebody that just gets along. Uh, they want somebody who gets along, can be effective, but at the same time uh, can advocate. And my, I have found that people respect you, even those uh, who may disagree with you, they, if they think that what you're doing is an honest belief, they'll give you some slack. And, uh, it's, but it's, at this point in history, we've got to take a stand. Finally, do you plan to go up to Tuscaloosa? I am not going to go to Tuscaloosa. We just got in, and uh, so I won't be there, but I'll be watching it. That is going to be one of the greatest spectacles of college football history, I would think. Um, and uh, of so, the be there. I know he's going to be there. I saw Laura Ingram last night at, at uh, Fox, and she's coming, and she's all excited. Uh, she's a big Alabama fan. We have a P 
picture at one of the Alabama games together. But she has, the whole country will be interested in this game. All right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Bob.